Welcome to worship from Trinity United Church in Winnipeg for Sunday, May the 24th. We're grateful that you have found this place to be with us today in worship. To begin, I want to say first a thank you to all who have contributed to West Broadway Community Ministry by dropping off juice boxes and granola bars, toothbrushes and toothpaste, and help them to enable their ministry to feed the people of Winnipeg in a new way. Those who have dropped off their garden tools, the gardeners are exceedingly grateful. They all have tools now and are ready to go to plant their gardens. So welcome to all, those from Trinity United here in Winnipeg, as well as we've learned from places all across Canada and around the world. We hope you find this worship meaningful. Let us worship. Today, as we hear the music and see the candle being lit, I invite you to hold close in your heart the people that you're concerned about, the places and the situations that are important to you, and the ones that you are um, wanting to hold close to God. is our song for the journey, the living word passed down from generation to generation to guide and inspire us. Today we hear a reading from the book of John. Jesus prays for his disciples. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all mankind, so that he might give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means knowing you, the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me glory in your presence now, the same glory I had with you before the world was made. I have made you known to those you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word, and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. I gave them the message that you gave me, and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours. And all you have is mine, and my glory is shown through them. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but you are in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one, just as you and I are one. While I was with them, I kept them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me. I protected them. And not one of them was lost, except the man who was bound to be lost, so that the scripture might come true. And now I am coming to you, and I say these things in the world, so that they might have my joy in their hearts in all its fullness. I gave them your message, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world, 
just as I do not belong to the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but I do ask you to keep them safe from the evil one. Just as I do not belong to the world, they do not belong to the world. Dedicate them to yourself by means of the truth. Your word is truth. May God bless to our understanding this reading from the Holy Scripture. So this week we have heard that our world is becoming wider, bigger, and more populated. And when I say our world, I mean the world that we have been living in the past little while. And while this might be a welcome change for some folks, Others are still very worried and concerned. Perhaps you're making plans for a kind of little bit of a bigger gathering, a get-together with some of your close family following all the guidelines. Or perhaps you're celebrating visiting a loved one in a care facility that you have only seen through a window and waved. Maybe you're thinking that things are not changing very much for you no matter what the officials are telling us. I invite you to take a moment to take a deep breath and feel your heart. What are you feeling today? Often when we've been holding it all together, when we've been putting all of our efforts into being strong and capable for everyone else around us and for ourselves, when we get to this point, when it seems as though the end is in sight and we should be celebrating, we feel as though we are tumbling and crumbling and falling down and our minds, our bodies, and our spirit and soul are trembling on the edge. Tears feel like they're close by for no particular reason. We snap at people and we don't know why. We're not sure that we can face another day, even though the world is telling us that things may be getting back to normal our world feels like it's crumbling. And this is our normal human way of reacting and responding. So I invite you now to close your eyes, to let your body relax, to lower those shoulders. What feelings are close to your heart today? In the scripture for today, Jesus prays for his disciples as they are in precisely the same kind of situation that we're in. He's been talking about his death for a while and the disciples have a hard time believing him at first, but now they know that his predictions are true. And they are anxious and afraid. They're concerned and uncertain. Instead of trying to answer all their questions, Jesus gathers them in prayer. He prays deeply and lovingly, maybe not our words, but the words of this author that remind them of God's presence with them, reminding them they are children of God, reminding them of their ministry in the world. He figuratively wraps his and God's loving arms around them to comfort and to strengthen them, to inspire and to challenge them, to love and to care for them all. Perhaps you have felt this at a time when you were feeling particularly low or sad 
or alone. Maybe in a terribly challenging time, you have known God's touch intimately and lovingly. So at this moment, I invite you to imagine God's loving arms all around you, giving you what you need and loving you deeply as we all move through these difficult times. And then as we go about our tasks, as we go about our day, as we attend to all that needs to be done, hold close to that feeling. Know that God's arms are around you, supporting you as you dance and sing, as you cry, as you try to figure out what comes next. As you feel like you're on the breaking point, know that you, I, all of us, are children of God and loved by God. And we hold on to that feeling as we move carefully, cautiously, but lovingly into our new world. I invite you to sing along as we hear Bert play and sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Helps, 
who have taken up tasks to help out that they've never done before or that they've done before and continue to do, who have dropped off or mailed in their envelopes, who have learned how to use Zoom, including a breakout room, and participated in programs and committees and board work, who have given beyond their normal commitment, who have made a phone call, written a card, waved at their neighbor, or those who have read scripture, offered prayers and beautiful music to our worship, to everyone who have given to this ministry here at Trinity, we are grateful. During our prayers today, there will be times of silence when I invite you to include the people that you are concerned about, the places that you would like to hold to God, those situations that you would like to keep close to your heart. And as well, I invite you to include yourselves in these prayers as we pray together. So I invite you to Take a moment to find the place that you speak to God, to breathe deeply, and know that God is with us as we pray. Let's pray. Holy God, in the flame of the candle, we have your light in the world. In the flame of the candle, we are reminded of your hope in the world. In the flame of the candle, we are reminded that you are with us. As we go about our world and try to figure out what to do, where to go, what new things to experience, and how to stay safe, there are many that we are concerned about. There are people that are struggling with their health or a loved one's health. There are those who are finding it hard to keep going week after week. There are folks who are feeling as though disasters in the world and Bangladesh and India and other places where we feel far away. We offer these in this silence. God, in this time of new life, when everything is growing around us, when every day the grass and the plants just seem to shoot up inch by inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter by centimeter, we too are reminded of the new life that you inspire in us. You have invited us to care for others in, in our actions and our prayers we have responded. So we hold those places, those people, and those situations together in this time of silence. God, we are grateful because we know your loving arms are around us. We know that your presence walks with us. We know that we pray for those people believing that your spirit will be part of their living. We hold them close and we surround them with your light and love. So hear us as we say the words that Jesus taught to us that we have said throughout the years and still today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next piece of music, again, is by Jim and Jean Strathdee. It was written by Natalie Sleeth, but it's a one that we are familiar with. We're grateful for their gift of music to us. with us all now and always. <laughs> 